So something in the Game of Thrones books that mostly don't appear in the show are the many dreams and visions that characters have. They have regular dreams and nightmares about their hopes and fears and memories, but dreams can also be connected to magic and prophecy. Some Starks have wolf dreams inside the minds of direwolves, and Targaryens have dragon dreams of fire and blood. Red priests see the future and past in their flames, Bran and Jojen have green dreams with magic trees, and Quaith uses glass candles to enter people's dreams. Point being, lots of characters in Game of Thrones have weird visions, often connecting to the future, past, magic, and prophecy. And this is especially true of Daenerys Targaryen. She has dragon dreams, fever dreams, prophetic dreams, glass candle dreams, she has a whole vision quest in the Dothraki Sea after eating some funny berries, but some of the most important and interesting visions in the whole series are the visions Danny has in the House of the Undying. In Book and Season 2, Daenerys comes to the city of Carth and meets a warlock called Piat Pri. He invites her to the House of the Undying, where he and his warlock buddies live, promising to give Danny great truth and wisdom. In the show, Piat Pri steals Danny's dragons to force her to come, but in the books she goes willingly. She comes to the entrance and is offered a potion called Shade of the Evening, which Piat says will open her mind to the truths within. So Danny takes the drugs offered by the strange man and enters the house. It's a strange, magical place full of passageways arranged in impossible ways, and there are endless rooms where Danny begins to see visions. The first vision is the weirdest. Danny sees a beautiful woman sprawled naked on the floor while four little men crawl over her, biting and fucking her body. The way this is usually interpreted, the woman represents Westeros, and the four men represent the four kings ravaging the country with war. It's kind of a gross metaphor, but it gets the point across. War is terrible, and so perhaps are the men who wage it. The reason why there are four men here, instead of all five kings of the War of the Five Kings, is probably that King Renly is dead at this point in the story. Anyway, Danny's second vision is of a feast of corpses. She sees savagely slaughtered feasters strewn across overturned furniture, and a dead man with the head of a wolf and an iron crown. This is pretty clearly the Red Wedding. The dead man is Rob Stark, after the phrase so his direwolf's head onto his corpse. Interestingly, this vision happens a whole book before the Red Wedding does, so this is a great example of a vision that accurately shows the future of the story before it happens. Danny's next vision is of the past. She sees inside the House with the Red Door, which was a house in Braavos where Daenerys and Viserys lived for a while after they fled Westeros, when Robert Baratheon took over. In Braavos, Danny and her brother were protected by Sir Willem Darry, a knight who stayed loyal to the Targaryens until he died of some sickness. The House with the Red Door is the closest place Danny has known to a home, and she dreams of it often as a place of safety and comfort and a happy, simple life. But the House with the Red Door is also the subject of conspiracy theories. There's this whole thing about how the House with the Red Door had a lemon tree outside, when trees are very rare in Bravos. So some people believe that the house might actually have been in Dawn as part of some Martell conspiracy, though the evidence for this isn't very convincing. Danny's fourth vision is of her father, the Mad King Aerys Targaryen, sitting the Iron Throne. Aerys says, let him be the King of Ashes, and what's going on here is that Aerys' army and son have just been destroyed by Robert Baratheon at the Battle of the Trident, so Aerys is giving the order to burn down King's Landing, so that Robert can't have it. He would have got away with it too if it weren't for a young Jaime Lannister killing the king and saving the city. Danny's fifth vision is of another dead Targaryen, her brother Rhaegar, the eldest child of King Aerys. In the vision, Rhaegar is with his wife, Elia Martell, and with their newborn son, who they name Aegon. Rhaegar says that this child Aegon is the prince that was promised. The prince that was promised, or Azor Ahai, is a hero prophesied to save the world. When he was young, Rhaegar believed that he was this hero, but he later comes to believe it would be his son Aegon. Rhaegar also says the dragon has three heads, and there must be one more. So, at this time, Rhaegar has two kids, a young daughter, Rhaenys, and now the infant Aegon. Aegon is the name of Aegon the Conqueror, the original Targaryen who took over Westeros 300 years ago. This Aegon had two sister wives, Rhaenys and Visenya, so it looks like Rhaegar was naming his kids after these original three Targaryens. 
He just needed a third child, Visenya, to complete the set. So that seems to be what he means when he says there must be one more. A problem, though, is that Rhaegar's wife Elia was frail and sickly, and after the birth of Aegon, the maesters said she couldn't have more kids. So Rhaegar had a problem. How was he going to have his third child, his third head of the dragon, if Elia couldn't give birth? Maybe this is part of the reason why Rhaegar ran off with Lyanna Stark. Of course, that led to Robert's Rebellion, and the death of Rhaegar, and the deaths of Elia, and Rhaenys, and Aegon, so so much for the prince that was promised, and the three heads of the dragon, but with Lyanna, Rhaegar did get to have his third child, Jon Snow. Danny keeps moving. She encounters strange phantoms that try to lure her into the wrong room, but she gets through and arrives at the true chamber of the Undying Ones themselves, a group of immortal warlocks who turn out to look like creepy blue corpses. There's a human heart floating above, it's like some scene from The Binding of Isaac, and the Undying whisper prophecies to Danny. They say, three fires must you light, one for life, and one for death, and one to love. Three mounts must you ride, one to bed, and one to dread, and one to love. And three treasons will you know, once for blood, and once for gold, and once for love. There are lots of different ways to interpret these lines, but here are some likely answers. The fire to light for life is probably the fire Danny lights to hatch her dragons, to give life to them. The fire for death could be a bunch of things, because Danny often kills people with fire, but it's probably the fire that Danny's just about to use to kill the undying, to bring death to the deathless. The mount to bed is probably the silver horse Danny rides to her first night with Drogo. The mount to dread is probably her dragon Drogon, who causes such dread in Danny's enemies. Some people interpret this mount thing differently, arguing that the mounts aren't literally animals that Danny rides, but they're actually the men Danny has sex with. So you could say Hisdar, or even potentially Euron, is a mount to dread. Maybe Drogo is the mount to love, and Hisdar is to bed, or something. There are lots of different arrangements, but what seems to make the most sense is just having the Silver and Drogon as Danny's mounts so far. Now the treasons. The treason for blood, according to Danny, is when Miri Mazdur kills Danny's unborn child Rago to avenge her people who were killed by the Dothraki. The treason for gold, Danny believes, is when Jorah reports on her to Varys, but the thing is, Jorah didn't betray her for gold, he just wanted a pardon so that he could go home to Westeros. Danny later thinks that this treason is from Brown Ben Plum, a sellsword captain who betrays her in the books, but he doesn't do it for gold either. So maybe the treason for gold is yet to come. It could maybe be from Dario, or Illyrio, or the Shave Pate. Regardless, this leaves a fire to love, a mount to love, and a treason for love. A fire to love is interesting wording, because the other fires were for life, for death. This is to love. Does this mean Danny will love a fire? What could that mean? Well, there's a lot of speculation that Danny and Jon Snow might fall in love, and Jon could represent fire in that he may be a Zora High, who is said to wield a flaming sword and represents light against darkness. The full wording here is that Danny must light a fire to love, so maybe Danny will light the fire that makes Jon a Zora High. This could connect to the story of Nissa Nissa. Apparently, the original Azor Ahai created his burning sword Lightbringer by plunging his sword into the body of his wife. If Jon Snow is Azor Ahai, maybe he'll have to do something similar with Daenerys. Maybe this could be the treason for love. This is all very vague, but however you look at it, love and fire and treason seem to be in Danny's future, and Jon Snow and Azor Ahai could easily be a big part of that. Oh, and there's also a mount, so maybe Danny will ride Ghost. The Undying say some more stuff. They call Danny Child of Storm and Daughter of Death, which refers to Danny's birth. She was born during a storm, and her mother died giving birth to her. The Undying call her Bride of Fire, which again could connect to Danny loving someone who symbolically is fire. And they also call her Slayer of Lies, which is an interesting one. We'll get back to this. And they call Danny Child of Three, which could just refer to the fact that she's the youngest of three children, but it could also connect to the more general Targaryen number three shenanigans, because the Undying also say three heads has the dragon. Then the Undying give Danny a bunch more visions at high speed. She sees her brother Viserys killed with molten gold by Drogo. 
She sees a tall lord with copper skin and silver gold hair standing beneath the banner of a fiery stallion, a burning city behind him. This is a cool one. With the skin of a Dothraki and the hair of a Targaryen and a sigil with both a horse and fire, this guy must be Rhaego, the son of Daenerys and Drogo, who was never born because he was killed in the womb by the magic of Miri Mazdur. This vision is what Danny's son would have become if he had lived, because Rhaegar was connected to a prophecy of his own. The Dosh Colleen tell Daenerys that her son would be the stallion who mounts the world, a great Dothraki warrior who'd unite the Kalasars and take over the world. But Rhaegar died, and the prophecy didn't come true. Danny then sees rubies flying like drops of blood from the chest of a dying prince. He sinks to his knees in the water and with his last breath murmurs a woman's name. So this guy is Rhaegar Targaryen again, Danny's brother. Here he's dying at the Battle of the Trident, killed by Robert Baratheon during his rebellion. The big question here is whose name does Rhaegar murmur? Maybe he named his wife, Elia Martell, but maybe he named Lyanna Stark, the woman he'd just run off with and started this whole war over in the first place. We're told by some characters that Rhaegar abducted and raped Lyanna, but many readers suspect that Rhaegar and Lyanna were actually in love. For now, it's a mystery, but Rhaegar saying Lyanna's name with his last breath would add something beautiful and tragic to this vision. Danny sees a blue-eyed king raise a red sword that glows like sunset, and this is probably the blue-eyed king Stannis Baratheon raising his burning sword at the beach on Dragonstone, back when Melisandre was trying to convince everyone that Stannis was Azor Ahai. The king in this vision casts no shadow, which probably hints at the magic shadow creature with Stannis' face that Melisandre conjures to kill Renly. A second way to interpret this vision, though, is that it could be an image of the future, of the true Azor Ahai. Like, maybe Jon Snow in the books will be resurrected, not as the same guy he was before, like in the show, but maybe as something different. He could have the blue eyes of a white, his sword could burn, transformed as Lightbringer, and he could be a king as the king in the north, so maybe he could fit this vision. It's not super likely, though. Danny sees a cloth dragon swaying on poles amidst a cheering crowd, which Danny later says is called a mummer's dragon. So remember Aegon, Rhaegar's infant son who died in Robert's Rebellion? Well, in the books, Varys and Illyrio claim to have secretly saved Aegon and to have raised him to be a perfect king. There's this whole big conspiracy to put Aegon on the Iron Throne, but the thing is, the evidence suggests that this Aegon Targaryen isn't Aegon Targaryen at all. The kid's a fake, making him, symbolically, a mummer's dragon, a fake Targaryen. So it's very interesting that the Undying call Danny Slayer of Lies. Maybe Danny will be the one to reveal Varys and Illyrio's deceptions. Then Danny sees a great stone beast taking wing from a smoking tower and breathing shadow fire. This one is tricky, but it's probably related to Melisandre's talk of waking a dragon from stone at the island of Dragonstone. Mel wanted to sacrifice a young boy called Edric Storm, use his king's blood to wake a stone dragon, but Edric is saved by Davos and it doesn't end up happening, so perhaps this is another example of a prophecy averted. Danny sees her silver trotting through the grass to a darkling stream beneath a sea of stars, which seems to be Danny on her horse on her wedding night to Drogo. Danny sees a corpse standing at the prow of a ship, eyes bright in his dead face, grey lips smiling sadly. This could be a bunch of people. Theon Greyjoy comes to mind, standing on a ship looking like a corpse after his torture by Ramsay, which was much worse in the books. It could also be a book character Victarion, a corpse in the sense that he's probably doomed to die in Slaver's Bay. Or it could be John Connington, looking dead and grey because of the greyscale taking over his body. It's hard to be sure with this vision. Danny sees a blue flower growing from a chink in a wall of ice, filling the air with sweetness. The wall of ice has got to be the wall, right? And as for the flower, blue winter roses are often associated with Lyanna Stark. What's at the wall that's connected to Lyanna? Lyanna's son, Jon Snow. The imagery of Jon filling the air with sweetness in Danny's vision might again support the idea of some romance between the two. Danny sees shadows whirling and dancing inside a tent, boneless and terrible, and this is the tent where Miri Mazdur performs the magic that kills the unborn Rago and leaves Drogo living but mindless. Danny sees a little girl running barefoot towards a big house with a red door, so this is that house in Bravos again. 
Danny sees Miri Mazdur shrieking in flames, a dragon bursting from her brow. So this is the fire where Danny hatches her dragons and burns Miri in the pyre. Danny sees the bloody corpse of a naked man bouncing and dragging behind a silver horse. The corpse is the wine cellar who tries to poison Danny under the orders of Varus in book and season one. When he's caught as punishment, he's dragged behind Danny's horse until he dies. Danny sees a white lion running through grass taller than a man. This one's kind of obscure. In book one, Khal Drogo hunts for a Fraka, a great white lion that lives in the Dothraki Sea. Drogo succeeds, brings back a dead lion, and makes a big cloak out of it for Danny to wear. The cloak makes Danny feel closer to Drogo after his death. So this lion running in the vision is presumably that same lion. There is a different interpretation though. Some people argue that Jaime is a Lannister lion and he wears the white cloak of a Kingsguard. So maybe he also symbolically fits with this vision. Beneath the mother of mountains, a line of naked crones creep from a great lake and kneel shivering before Daenerys, their grey heads bowed. These crones are the Dosh Kaleen of Vaes Dothrak, the Dothraki city. In the show, Danny has already visited here twice, but in the books she hasn't made her second visit yet. There'll surely be differences between the show and book versions, but this vision looks pretty similar to the show, with the Dothraki kneeling before Daenerys. In her final vision, Danny sees 10,000 slaves lifting blood-stained hands as she races by on her silver, riding like the wind, with the slaves crying, Mother. This is the scene from book and season 3 where Danny is crowded by the freed slaves of Yunkai. In the vision, they reach for her, touch her, tug at her cloak, the hem of her skirt, wanting her fire, her life, and then Danny snaps out of it and sees all the corpsey, gross, undying warlocks swarming her, grabbing her, apparently trying to kill her and take her power and her dragons. So Danny's dragon Drogon kills them all and burns down the house of the undying, which may, by the way, be the fire for death. But yeah, these are the visions in the books, but let's also have a look at the visions in the show. In the show, Danny has three quick visions in the House of the Undying. First, Danny sees the throne room in King's Landing, which appears to have been burned. The roof's gone, and snow is falling onto the Iron Throne. In the books, it may be Cersei's wildfire explosion that burns the Red Keep, though in the show, the wildfire only burns the Sept, so at least in the show, we might have some second burning, caused perhaps by Danny's dragons. Also, we have this moment of Danny reaching out to touch the throne, but then leaving before she grabs it, maybe hinting that Danny will never quite reach the throne. Danny then sees the wall, and it does seem likely that Danny will go there sometime, because someone needs to destroy the White Walker's army of the dead, and Danny's dragons do seem the perfect weapon to defeat them. Finally, Danny enters a tent and sees her love Drogo and the son they never had, Rago. It's a touching moment where Danny pauses to reconnect with her past, but she soon moves on and faces the future. Her visions end, and she kills Piatbri with fire, much like in the books. So, what have we learned from all this? We've seen that visions and dreams in Thrones can accurately predict the future, like this vision of the Red Wedding and this one of the slaves of Yunkai. We've also seen that visions and prophecies can be wrong. The prophecy of the stallion who mounts the world failed, and Rhaegar was wrong about the prince that was promised, and this thing with the stone dragons also seems not to have happened. Even when they are true, visions and prophecies can be so vague and interpreted in so many ways that they're usually just not helpful for the characters of the story. In fact, they're often harmful. Would Miri have killed Rhaegar if it weren't for the prophecy of the stallion who mounts the world? Would Rhaegar have run off with Lyanna if it weren't for the prince that was promised? Chasing after prophecies has led to all sorts of chaos and death. As one character puts it, prophecy will bite your prick off every time. But still, there are some tantalizing hints here. It looks like love and fire and treason are in Danny's future, which could very well connect to Azora High and maybe Jon Snow. As the Slayer of Lies, Danny may be an enemy of Varys and his supposed Aegon Targaryen, and it seems likely that she'll at some point go to the Wall to fight against the White Walkers. If nothing else, it's pretty cool to get these visions of the past with Rhaegar and Elia and Ares. So thanks for watching. This video topic was chosen by patrons on Patreon. We hold a big vote for a video topic every now and then. If you'd like to support Old Shift X producing high quality Thrones content in the long dark off season, check out patreon.com slash altshiftx.
Thanks to patrons Artoria Stark, Fallon Mail, Seriously, Vincent von Fansent, Mohammed Al-Kabi, Kenan Rive, and Eric P. Davis. Cheers.